Hello, thank you very much for joining us today in our art talk number 49. Uh, today is a bit of a monologue. Um, I wish I can talk to the artists uh, at this moment, but they are not available to talk to us. So that's the reason that we kind of like put together these online exhibitions. Um, we're gonna go through two of them today. They're both exhibitions available at our website and they're also available, all the works are available in our platforms, our, our websites, First Steps, RC, and Art Spread in Paris. Um, these um, two online exhibitions, uh, we have curated them uh, maybe six, eight months ago, and um, they were part of moments that we believe we were all passing through. So one of the first exhibitions that we curate and we're going to talk about today um, is an exhibition that has a bit of nostalgic. Um, the exhibition includes the work of Paloma Castello and Roberto Fonfria. Uh, one artist is from Colombia and another artist is from Venezuela. Um, I am going to show you um, wall by wall in our online gallery these exhibitions. Uh, here we go. Uh, this first exhibition that we're going to discuss, discuss today is called We Love Them All. It's pretty much an homage to um, these two artists that work around vintage images, um, trying to send a message to the audience about what they believe in their life and the current moment. And we're going to start with the work of Paloma Castello, um, um, a very young, bright mind uh, that lives uh, in Colombia now. But before that, she was um, doing a master's in Spain. She's um, a very responsible artist with her work. Uh, we truly believe um, in her since we somehow get the chance to, to represent her work here in America. We have sold her work uh, in different places around the world. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing to see how the artist is developing in a way where they are able to create different bodies of work during the time and how they are growing with the work at the same time. Paloma started this first series called Castello Land, which was a series that somehow she dedicated to her ancestors and, and her, her family and the places that she somehow um, has been living during childhood. And here we can see a portrait of Paloma uh, working uh, constantly and, and different of programs. She just have an exhibition in, in Colombia, very successful with a new body of work called Tropicarios. Um, but when we went to show these first images of Castello Land, we curate a series of moments, um, in a way, precious, um, different people that we grew up with, um, some of us, um, our parents grew up with. You know, in this very large image, we can see uh, work of photographs that she discovered and appropriate herself and then include particular elements that she somehow surrounded with at her home. And this particular image of um, James Dean, she include a beautiful piece of gold imagine image, you know, and, and that message is the image of freedom. Um, we also have Rita Haber smoking in one of her favorite movies, and she in somehow intervene the piece with this old mirror. And at the same time, she have Marlene Dietrich through the eyes of a chandelier of crystals. So this somehow tribute to um, the old movie stars from the 20s, 40s, 30s, 50s. You know, it's, it's amazing to see how a person that is under 30, she is somehow rescuing these images, appropriating themselves, and at the same time, mixing them with elements. And that's the reason that we love the work. You know, we can see this amazing picture of Mata Hari, 
uh, and, and Sidney Poitier with a very contemporary iPhone radio, you know, and then why, in a way, is that appropriation of the image of these iconic moments that these fantastic actors or actresses you know, show us in black and white or color movies. The sense of appropriation, in a way, is a sense of um, validation of what they did, you know, and at the same time, a whole story, you know, of, um, of, of, this, of the memory of these young art artists surrounded by all objects they, at their home, uh, the her grandmother have, and then how she, if somehow is growing up, you know, trying to, to make these uh, moments uh, her own, you know, and that is something that we absolutely love. You know, we can see here this Elvis Presley with this magic crystal ball, and then uh, again, a close up of the Im image of James Dean. We can see here Marlo Brando through the TV, um, and again, James Dean, uh, an old radio, and this somehow, uh, women are desperate for attention and love. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. It's one of um, part of a um, James Bond movie. She's fascinated with to, to, with the James Bond character, My West, and this all sort of electrical phone. Here we have James Bond, and this is a very special piece. You know, she actually carved herself the frames. You know, and, and in a way, she she created a sort of Art Deco effect on these plastic cardboard frames. Uh, I actually fell in love with this piece and I acquired it for myself because I think it's just a very, very special piece uh, to see James Bond um, somehow seen through these old binoculars, you know, that she found in her home. So this for a young woman and for a young actress artists, you know, to take these actors and actresses from the past. I just actually finished a series of Matahari and Amazon Prime, which is Russian version or something like that, which was very interesting. And I was just taking a look of why a person that is under 25 years old and me that are over 50 are thinking about this particular subject and why they do it. You know, we have Rudolf Valentino and how she put just a soft feather on her eyes, blocking her view. Here we have uh, Marlene Dietrich again, a big close up. Um, she has two versions of this particular image. We love it too. Sydney Portier again with the radio. Rita Hayward. And they all come in very limited edition. She doesn't like to do very large editions because she's a, she continues working. And they have this amazing book called Castello Land, where you can see the entire body of work that she have developed through the years with all these amazing objects, which is amazing to see that, that an artist so young trying to document her work and trying to put it together in a way so responsible with a book and an installation and a series of exhibitions. Josephine Baker, and we're gonna show you now the video of the exhibition, which is beautiful. Let me take a look, it's not here. No, we're looking for that. Somehow I lost it, I don't know why, but it's gonna come back to me in a second. So apologize for that. Let's take a look. Somehow I save it, I know that it is here. Please give me one second. Before we go to the next artist, I'm gonna keep looking for the video. Um, keep looking for the video. I'm so sorry. Somehow I believe I deleted by mistake. That was not good. But I will get back to you with the video, I promise. So maybe if my assistant is, is actually seeing us, he will, she will send it again. Again, apologize for that. We're gonna pass through the second artist. His name is Robert Formfria. He's a very talented young Venezuelan guy who actually worked in Miami and, and worked very much into the graphic design world. Her images, his images are all about 
memorabilia of objects and photographs and tickets and movie tickets and receipts and invoices that she found around he found around and he created these sort of unknown personalities in each of the of the paperwork that she, he does you know they're all photographs as i mentioned before there are catalogs there are books and somehow these photo collages that he um, somehow create you know and manipulate and in a way he he burned them he rides on it he he destroyed them in a way to, to somehow create his own memory and we have a beautiful interview that we did with him uh, in our IGTV I highly recommend it to see it because he gave us a tour of his um of his um, place to work you know where he have all his collection here in Wynwood we fell in love with his work through um, another dealer, Mally Parkerson, and we really discovered, in a way, the sort of melancholia of um, how an artist, again, so young, is inspired by the old. You know, um, we have so many artists now that are just wanted to look for the new stuff. You know, these artists now are just, in a way, looking for the new um way to see the old things and we really respect his work you know we can see the sort of faces looking at you they're coming from an old catalogs and magazines and books and then suddenly he intervened them you know with these objects that don't belong to this particular moment and he create this unique one-of-a-kind images you know in his case you know they're all um one-of-a-kind images he also work um, with these pieces of old uh, woodwork, you know, and pieces of, uh, they have these little holes and, and somehow paint on it and glue on it, these images. And we really reflect, we wanted to reflect with this exhibition that we did with him, um, a sense of communication between what he feels and wanted to somehow express through his artwork. and. When we found his work, we realized that somehow Paloma Castello's work, in a way, was very compatible to him. You know, having a person, both of them are under 30, and having them done unique images, uh, trying to rescue the past, is quite fascinating to us. You know, here we see some of new work that we are having for sale in our, all our platforms. They're all somehow melancholic, but they're looking at you with such a serenity, you know, uh, to have them in, in a place. It's actually quite, quite empowering. I'm going to show you the big wall that we did in our online gallery with Roberto. We enlarged them. You know, we have to create this um, online gallery for our own satisfaction, I guess, and at the same time to promote our artists. It was important for us to somehow let them display the work in a way that they can feel that the work matters. So we're not only selling them, you know, uh, in our platforms, we're also, you know, trying to to support them t um, through through different platforms, you know, such as RC, First Steps, Arsper, uh, with their talks, the art talks that we have done already, almost 50, you know, it, it takes somehow a lot of work, but we are very satisfied with that. Um, this exhibition, we love them all, you know, is here and you can see it. And I found it. The last uh, artist that we're gonna talk is an artist that we don't represent and you can see it here. Um, we actually found his work in Mexico and we went to visit him at his studio and I acquired a large collection of work, works and he actually is just a fascinating artist. His name is Leobardo Huerta. We don't have the pleasure to represent him, but I have it in my collection. He actually rescued real vintage pictures and he intervened in. We're going to show you his work now after we finish this highlight of Paloma and Roberto von Fria. This is Leobardo Huerta's work. I 
and here is the end of the exhibition. You can see them all in our, in our website. These pieces of Roberto von Freya, you know, the, for, um, I'm sorry, Leobardo Huerta, they're really incredible because he just goes around Mexico and, and France and Germany where he used to live and rescue all these painters' pictures and then somehow it's a combination of pop art, um, an insult to the system. Uh, this is my favorite, you know, it, he's just talking about a famous painter and, and about the money and how he take these characters, unknown characters, and make them his own. You know, this is another one that I absolutely adore. This unknown person, they almost look like a comic. You know, how he put this sort of palette of color, creating this sort of geometrical, kind of like mystery characters, tattooing their faces. Um, in a way, making fun of these families with a Mickey Mouse hat. I just got in love, you know, I bought so many and then I've been selling them here in America. I've been begging him to represent him, but he is just a very free man. He doesn't like to be represented or, or anything. So each piece is unique. And, uh, and you can see here how amazing it is to see this this beautiful couple. This is another beautiful one. Here you have a family. Okay, so this was our exhibition. Uh, we loved them all. Then, as you many know, um, already know, you know, I've been working with the Horse Stay for many, many years. Um, we have curated many exhibitions all around the world and in, in Istanbul and New York and Spain and in many other places and um, we have collaborated with them and we decided to do an online exhibition um, for horse it's a tribute of his fashion and color um, prints they were actually brought alive by the state in collaboration with Condé Nast and Vogue and we have the privilege to to be involved in a way um, we represent his work here in America among other galleries. Here is our exhibition, Fashion in Color. It's a sneak peek of what we're going to be doing very soon, and we'll let you know more news. This is the picture of the cover of the Cartier book last year. And beautiful prints that were done on the 40s, 50s, 60s and they're all about empowering the women. You know, horse was a fascinating character and the owner of the horse be, be horse estate is one of the persons that has been my mentor. And through him and through the state, we are lucky enough to, to have available these prints. You know, they're all in limited editions. Um, they're coming in no many sizes, two or three. And, and there are just many of them already gone, sold. They're already in auctions because they're already out of the market, but we still have lots of work of Horst B. Horst. Horst was um, a German photographer who moved to Paris to work for Le Corbusier and then moved to America, uh, Lourdes by Condé Nast, and he created an incredible career through the years. He was called the Master of Light, and he's also part of a of that generation of big photographers such as Man Ray, um, Le Cor everybody who, anybody in the work of, of photography have lots of respect for, for Horse Be Horse. Here you can see some of the walls that we create for him. You know, it's a small selection. Then I'm gonna show you a bit more of his work. Here we have. Then we're gonna go closer to see image by image and talk about it, you know. Again, there were all commissions for magazines and a um, couple of years ago, the state decided to recreate this sort of a special limited edition of these images. We did a show, our last show was in Istanbul at the Leica Museum and, and just to see them in color, working to the perfection is quite spectacular. Here you have, you know, as you can see during these um, photo shoots, you know, 
and, and different photos is all about the empowering of the woman. You know, he become a, a photographer of light and glamour uh, and he have maybe 90, 900 covers of different magazines. His whole career was with Vogue uh, and he also collaborated with Diana Brilland. He photographed anybody who was everybody, you know, from the 50s to the 90s even, you know. He loved to recreate sets. He worked with Dali. Uh, he photographed uh, Saiton, Blee, Saint Laurent, Marella Agnelli, Doris Duke. Um, but to see this color work now with this technology um, printed, it's just spectacular, you know. You don't even see that sort of level of color in the old magazines and the details. You can see here, this set. I love the geometrical um, set that was created for this particular set. Here we have, this is one of major seller. We already have maybe two editions left of this particular print. This is also a beautiful one. You can see them all in our website, the Art Design Project, and our Instagram. And then you can purchase them, all of them, and RC First Steps and Art Spare in Paris. Uh, we're planning our new exhibition um, in um, China and then in Scandinavia. And there is also plans of a movie, which I'm delighted to tell you now that things are happening. We have a beautiful also interview with um, the curator of photography of the Victoria Albert Museum, uh, who was Susanna Brown, which is one of the persons that knows more about Horst. And he's also in our IGTV. We give a sneak peek of the exhibition that was done at the Victoria Albert Museum a couple of years ago, which was absolutely spectacular. These pictures prices start in 10,000. Now they're going in 150 because they're only like seven or eight pictures only done and they're already gone. So I wanted to share with you some of them and many of them are still available. Look at the glamour and the light and the, and the focus and you know, or the camera on his face. He hates um, artificial light. So everything was with natural light. He was called the master of light. Here we go, it's beautiful fashion and colors. I'm gonna show you also some portraits of very famous people that he photographed through the years. Dorian Lay, here we got, I adore this one. I hope I'm not going too fast. Here you have portraits. They're part of a set of portfolios that we have available as well. There are only 10 of Marella Agnelli in her house wearing a pushy dress. Here again, another, you know, he used to go and visit these people and spend two, three weeks and his boyfriend, Valentin Ladford, will write the test for these articles. It was a time when Diana Brillan in the 70s and 80s sort of came up with the idea that was interesting to photograph people at their home. <laughs> now it's all, it's all about that. Here we have Marella, Marella again in her house in Villa Perazza in Italy wearing a costume couture Valentino, Gloria Vanderbilt and her neat uh, dress. You know, she was just amazing. The mother of Anderson Cooper, Paloma Picasso in her apartment in New York in 1988 when she was just as hottest as ever. I'm gonna show you another portrait of Paloma that is divine. Here it is. Um, then Catherine Deneuve, one of the most beautiful pictures of her. Yves Saint Laurent in his house in Normandy. There are two beautiful pictures of him. And um, please take a look of the wallpaper on the back. It's just extraordinary. It was the cover of our, our book for the Barcelona exhibition that we did a couple of years ago. Paloma Picasso with her jewelry. At the time, she was just sort of starting to work with Tiffany. But these images are so iconic, you know, and at the same time, so precious to super, like, you know, they say, this is amazing how to, to see this beautiful woman that is still timeless. Jane Fonda, out of her movie, on a movie set. 
Elsa Peretti, very famous, still alive. Um, a Tiffany designer and best friend of Halston. Ibsen Laurent again, this is the second image that I want to show you on his camel suit in Normandy. Um, if, it was funny because a horse will visit the people in their house. So this was his house in Normandy. There is also a beautiful portfolio that is coming now with his house in Morocco. He also photographing at his studio in Paris. Then he will go and photograph Chanel at his house. Uh, it was because he was friend of all these people. So the collectors are just fascinated by this. Jane Holzer in her Moroccan room with these two amazing Andy Warhols in the background. Lee Roswell gardening. Diane von Fustenberg in her Moroccan room in New York is still married to Egon von Fustenberg. And here are some of the black and whites that I'm gonna show you. Uh, they were part before he went into color. Favorite picture of Coco Chanel is still hang at the atelier in Paris. There is a beautiful story about this picture. When he went to photograph Coco Chanel, he admired all his antique, all her antiques, and um, she was so happy with this particular picture. And she asked him, "What could I give you?" And he said, "No, absolutely nothing." But she noticed that he was impressed about all the antiques that she had. And at the, the, the next day, it was a truck full of antiques at his apartment in Paris. What a generous gesture. <laughs> An advertising for uh, panties that he did in the 80s. Here you can see more. We just actually sold one of these pictures to a collector in South America. Costume dresses by Dali, photographed by Horse Be Horse. And tomorrow we're gonna have a beautiful interview with Dora Franco, a Colombian photographer, uh, that we have helped her to rescue some of her archives and she was a model for Dali so we're going to be able to talk about her experiences and her work another panty house advertising nothing more beautiful than that I love the stripes on the, on the fabric of the skirt and also on the shoes this is the most iconic picture of horse the corset on main shoreboard which was the inspiration for um Madonna in her video Vogue. The entire video is inspired by that. Marlene Dietrich in two occasions, in California and in Oyster Bay. And another pic of Coco Chanel with her magnificent antiques in her Paris apartment. So tomorrow, you know, it's also gonna be a very special day. Um, so I'm gonna let you know what we're gonna have tomorrow. I'm gonna show again the video before I go of the two exhibitions for you guys to enjoy it. This is the homage to Horse Be Horse. So like a minute of silence because every time I see these images I'm just like incredibly inspired by by everything. That was Fashion in Color, our homage to Horse Be Horse, curated by us. And this is We Love Them All, an exhibition with the works of Palermo Castello, Roberto Fonfria, and Leobardo Huerta, an artist that we don't represent. Leobardo, but we represent the other two and we are very happy displaying their work for sale in all our art channels. It's a bit of a melancholia today, but I wanted to start the week like that, remembering the past, looking ahead for the future. So I hope you guys like it. Tomorrow we're gonna have, again, this amazing um, talk with this um, 
kind of like an icon in South America and especially in Colombia where I'm from, Dora Franco. It's gonna be a conversation with her from San Diego where she's living now, talking about how she modeled for Avedon, for Dali, how she was such a successful um, model with Mari Meco and um, in Scandinavia. And um, we're gonna show her work. So we're delighted to do that. Um, and um, I really hope you can join us tomorrow at noon. Uh, then on Thursday, we're gonna have a sneak peek of the work of Manuel Santalice's new installation at in a gallery upstate New York. And again, I'm gonna leave you here with a sneak peek of Dora Franco's uh, self-portrait uh, that we're gonna discuss tomorrow. And I hope uh, you guys can follow us at the Art Design Project. You guys can buy some art from these artists and support them during this time. Please don't forget to wear your mask and be safe. Thank you so much for joining us.